Um, and they asked people, what is your ideal picture? So they went out all over the globe and did, and did effectively market research, asking people, what's your ideal, ideal picture? Um, and then they painted it. They actually did the research and painted the, painted the painting. And so in the United States, it looked like this. Where they can see, everybody see? This was, this was the ideal picture as done based on quantitative research by Americans. And in Russia, the painting looked like this. Shockingly similar. Everybody see? And this is the uh, same, same uh, result in France. A little more pastoral. So when, when you look at all three of these images, and if I showed you South Korea, and if I showed you Paraguay, and all the other countries, you know what you see? Something very, very similar. But when you look at this, what does it make you think? They're all the same. And would anybody in this room hang that picture in your, in your living room or in your office or put that picture up on the wall? No. Right? And why wouldn't you? Why wouldn't you put that, why wouldn't you take that well-painted picture of a horse and some water and blue sky and a house and some people walking, why wouldn't you put that in your, in your living room? Um, although it has all the attributes, right, it has all the dynamic that you claim that you want if you do market research, it actually isn't personal to who you are in any way, right? Like it doesn't create any emotion, it doesn't create any passion, it's mass, right? And when you, um, we're gonna tie this all together to retail in a moment. So it appeals to the most possible people, right? These Russian artists went out, talked to some amazing uh, Americans and people in France and people all over the world, did the research and came up with the picture. And it appeals to the most people, and yet to absolutely no one passionately. Right? Nobody here, when I showed the pictures, had that look in their eye like, wow, I wish that painting was hanging over the dining room table or the mantel place in my house. Because it is just a mass painting. There's no emotion, there's no connection in that painting whatsoever. So let's tie this together to why people shop. So if you think about why people shop, they're trying to accomplish really two fundamental things, right? One is survival, right? We'll talk about that for a minute. And then happiness, like what actually puts wind in your sails as a human being. So when you're, when you're shopping for survival, what are you doing? You're buying soap and toiletries and diapers and fruit and water and <coughs> lean-to, right? Maslow's need states, you're trying to survive. And you really don't care at all about differentiation. What do you care about when you're shopping for those things? Right? For all of us, I mean, I have an 11-year-old and a 6-year-old, when I shop for any of those things, I want speed and price. Right? Those are the things that I'm focused on. I really care, how do I get that stuff as quickly as humanly possible and get it into my house so I can get over with the shopping experience? Right? I think that makes pretty much sense. And retail innovation has largely spent all of in the last hundred years, all of retail innovation has been focused on driving costs out of the retail system, right? How do I get the products as quickly as humanly possible to my doorstep as cheap as humanly possible? Walmart supply chain. Wow, have they mastered taking costs out of the system, right? Amazon's overnight shipping, you buy it today and it shows up in your house tomorrow morning and we all think, holy cow, the internet is remarkable, right? I, got, I wanted something and it showed up to me overnight. Or focus group product development. Procter & Gamble says, how are we gonna develop a product that the most number of people are gonna want for their survival needs, right? Diapers or soap or what have you. I think, in fact, most if not all retail innovation has been focused right here, right? How do we drive a cheaper experience, a faster experience for consumers? Not that there's anything wrong with that. And online, in fact, is no better. Right? If you think about how people shop online, my wife will tell me online, online shopping was designed by men for men. Right? How do I shop? I take the list she hands me, I go get the stuff as quickly as possible, and I get the hell out of the store as fast as possible. Right? Amazon is that. Right? It's brilliant at it, right? But it, you know, I hit I need diapers, search, boom, they're here, and I'm done. I can move on to watch football. Online is absolutely no better. There's endless online catalogs. 
There's great search, thanks to Amazon. There's price comparison engines that let me say, hey, I wanted that product, that Canon camera. Who has that Canon camera as inexpensively as humanly possible? And I think all of that is fantastic for buying commodity products. I don't think it's particularly good for things that are emotional. Right? And if you think about how people shop, there's uh, the emotional side of discovery is an important part of actually how people really buy things in this world. Um, so people need affirmation, they need to belong, they need discovery, enlightenment, participation, right? The, high, the highest point on Maslow's needs. These are the things that are personal, that make us human, right? I don't, I don't know too many people who are passionate about the, the, the um, cheap prices or fast shipping that they get from Amazon. They're hard proofs, they're physical things that are totally reasonable and effective, but I don't know if they, they don't make my heart flutter. Um, I think innovation in retail has largely missed us. And as you look at the speed of growth of companies like mine and others, um, I think we're onto something pretty transformative. Uh, so there's been little in retail innovation here, largely ignoring human and emotional needs for shoppers. And I think shoppers today feel alone. And why do we know this? Because 70% of women seek help getting advice before they actually make a purchase. 70% of women seek help before they make a purchase. <coughs> Online e-commerce is growing 20% a year, and e-commerce today is, uh, is larger than the total amount of uh, box office receipts in the, in the movie business, and, and larger by a factor of 10x than uh, US television ad dollars. There's something going on with that woman who's trying to shop and he wants to get help. She's overwhelmed and confused. And she has what, what has been affectionately described as the para paradox of choice, or the impotence of abundance, as my friend Randy Grossman at, uh, um, at HSM likes to say. Right? There is too much out there for her to know what to buy. And so, <coughs> largely, that shopping experience, she knows it. Doesn't know what to choose or why to choose it. Yeah, yeah. And every single consumer on the internet largely is treated the same. If you log into Amazon or I log into Amazon, it's basically a shopping experience that's one size fits all. Just like that painting. And that painting, oh, whenever I see this painting, it makes me think of you know, our Howard Johnson's or a Holiday Inn. There's nothing offensive about it, but there's certainly nothing memorable about it. So what does this social have to do with retail? Right? What does this have to do with how, what the next decade of shopping will look like? Um, so we all know about the great social innovations in the last five years that have totally blown up the traditional media landscape. You know, there is Twitter in my newsfeed, there's Facebook in the photos of my friends, there's LinkedIn in my ability to connect to everybody here about job opportunities and people to recruit. And together, the market cap of those companies is larger than the market cap of all of these combined. And they're five years. Right? So when you think about the rate of disruption, when you actually create an experience that's personal and relevant to a consumer, it's pretty remarkable. So by making connections, you're, I'm at the center of my own discovery. My experience is programmed for me, by me, and my connections are always relevant. I'll tell you how OpenStack works in just a second. Engaging, changing. So what does this mean for retail, if you think about it? So a lot of what you'll hear retailers say, Best Buy or other retailers will say, you know what, I'm going to put Facebook comments in my, in my store and that will make me a social retailer. Or I'm going to use Twitter to do customer service. I think that's an in insufficient effect. Um, I think what we're seeing with uh, social is there's a real fundamental change in how goods are going to be distributed in the next decade. How will we merchandise the store? How will actually products be discovered and put in place for consumers to buy? Like Threadless has done, right? We all know about how Threadless has said to their audience, you design the products and we'll merchandise them. Create the marketing the way Groupon did early on. Let's use our, let's actually use our customers as our megaphone to drive more customers. 
or create habitual behavior the way shoe dazzle has done. Effectively, Columbia House for cheap shoes. Brilliantly executed, but that's what the business is. Or what we've done at Open Sky. So let's tell you about Open Sky. Open Sky launched April 5th of 2011. You join Open Sky for free. You choose a handful of celebrities to connect to, like Martha Stewart or Bobby Flay or Tom Colicchio or Molly Sinek or Pat Malakshmi or Cynthia Rowley. There's 80 or 100 of them. You choose people to connect to based on your interest and your passion. And then they start to merchandise in your feed related to their expertise. So what we have built is boutique-like shopping in a Facebook-like <laughs> environment. So let's deconstruct that. The first, the boutique life, it's expert, it's experts. So in this room, I'm sure there's a few people who think Tom Colicchio is the best chef ever. And then I'm sure there's a few people in this room who think he stinks. No interest in Tom Colicchio. I'm all for Bobby Flay, one of the other chefs on the Open Sky Bar. Because you're in charge, you choose who you want to connect to. Just like if you were walking down the street on Madison Avenue or Fifth Avenue or on Smith Street in Brooklyn, you choose which boutiques you want to go into. Right? I think that makes sense. And Facebook like because it's programmed just for me. So on Open Sky today, it's incredibly simple. You join for free, you personalize your experience based on your interests and your passion. So I'm a vegetarian, so I don't follow, I want nothing to do with our chefs, but I'm connected to Alicia Silverstone, who's a vegan. And she's merchandising all this green stuff for me. And I'm certain by the summer I'll be eating steaks again. And I'll dump her and, be, and connect to Glickio because he'll have great steaks for crap. Simple experience, personal and relevant experience, fun and serendipitous, all about discovery of new product, human, most importantly, which is the antithesis of most internet shopping. So we've been live eight months. We have over a million members. We've had 50% monthly revenue growth. And we've shipped over 150,000 boxes of product. We are one of the fat, we, we've grown faster than just about any other e commerce company in the last four or five years. We've reached a million members a year and four months faster than Guilt Group did. We, we've shipped more boxes than Guilt Group shipped in their full second 24 months. And 65% of our Open Sky customers have made a repeat purchase in eight weeks. So I got a metrics report from, from last week, last night. 75% of our orders last week on Open Sky were repeat customers. So what we've begun to build is a deeply personal retail shopping experience based on connections you make to people who inspire you. There are over six million of, of those connections in the platform. So let's let me explain it because I'm I'm certain if I look around the room, considering that 85 percent of our customers are women with a household income of um, hundred thousand dollars between the ages of 35 and 45, given the demographics of who's in this room, I suspect most of you are not Open Sky members. So let's go through it again. When you join Open Sky, you choose a handful of people to connect to that are relevant to your passion and your interest. Food, home, style, design. So Carmelo Anthony's wife, Lala Anthony, on Open Sky, selling product like it's going out of style. Because Lala has a, a she's, she's sort of Kim Kardashian, basically, sort of in, a, in her own way. So she's got, legions of fans who are joining Open Sky to connect to her to discover the product she merchandises. And there's over six million of these connections on our platform today. So this is what we think is actually truly the beginning of social shopping. Right? We've talked about social shopping as a, I think it's been misdescribed. Social actually means is it personal and relevant to me? Right? LinkedIn is social because it's me at the center. Facebook is social because I have 300 friends in face, on Facebook. I don't see those other 900 million people. I wouldn't want to. If I saw them, that would be noisy and disruptive. If it's programmed by me, 
and the, the content that I discover is what my friend, the photos my friends share of what they did last weekend. Well, on Open Sky, the content that I discover are products that are merchandised for me by Martha Stewart or Pat Malakshmi or you know a whole host of other folks. So I'm John at OpenSky.com. Uh, we have we have 88 people on staff. We're based here in New York. We have an office in Nashville and an office in LA. We've raised $50 million from Providence, Canaan, Highland, and the Rain Group. Uh, by way of background, before I started Open Sky, I had been the CEO of Ford Models, the fashion talent firm, which I took over and turned around and then sold. And then early in my career, I had the good fortune to work with Bill Day, a remarkable entrepreneur, and Scott Kernan, um, the building of that when I was here for them right after. Any questions? Comments? What is your revenue model? Are you active as a retailer? So Open Sky is a retailer. We're a merchant of record on everything you buy. So you join Open Sky and you shop, and your credit card says Open Sky on it. And if you have a problem, you call 1-877-734-OPEN, and you talk to an Open Sky customer service person, and in our uh, first eight months, we've had a return, we have a 90 day money back guarantee on everything you buy. Anybody want to venture a guess at our return rate? 5%? So anybody know what Amazon's return rate is? 11. HSN, 19. Zappos, 46. Open Sky, 3. Why? Because if you buy the right stuff from someone who, if you, tr who you trust and inspires you, you know what you do? You're happy. You actually didn't buy the wrong thing. Another question I saw over here. Do you warehouse and ship or do you drop ship? Or do you so, so um, really important question, right? So how many people are aware of internet e-commerce companies balance sheets blowing up because they buy too much stuff? Right? That, we've all heard that story. So what OpenSky does is two things that are really interesting. The first is um, a ton of our, more than half of the products are drop ship fulfilled. Interestingly, the product that we fulfill ourselves, the majority of which is done on what we call post buyer consignment. Let's role play why this is important. If you make olive oil that's fantastic, I'll give a real life example. Tom Colicchio, right? He owns Kraft and Witchcraft and Top Chef. So Tom Colicchio is on Open Sky merchandising. One of the products he merchandises is a tuna fish that, that he uses in Witchcraft to make the great Witchcraft tuna fish. <coughs> made by a company called American Tuna. American Tuna is a small little company that nobody here has ever heard of, right? They're nobody's bumblebee. American Tuna consigns the product to Open Sky at below their standard wholesale price because they've got Tom Colicchio, who's got over 100,000 Open Sky followers, and he's merchandising how to make tuna fish with a recipe, the content that he creates and writes on his own. Um, so we have good margins and a great relationship with manufacturers. The other point I want to make about this, 50% of the products we sell every week receive zero Open Sky promotion because our members are coming back into Open Sky every day to, to, to explore and discover and shop. So we're not a flash sale business doing events every week, basically getting crushed, their margins getting crushed. Our, our, Business is all about creating this personal shopping experience. So if you're into Tom Colicchio, you can shop his assortment or his boutique. What's in it for Tom, Martha, Bobby? Ah, so good question. I'm glad you asked. So the two companies I've worked at besides OpenSky in the last 15 years are two of the most innovative businesses around creating value in a goal-aligned way. At about.com, right, the guides created 100% of the content for 30% or so of the net ad share. So Scott and Bill built a business where there was no, right, we didn't pay any upfront fees for all of those 800 people creating the content. And the New York Times, I'm sure, is pretty happy about that today. At Ford Models, 4,000 of the world's most beautiful people, hair and makeup, artists, stylists, you name it, the world's largest fashion talent firm, they only got paid when they actually went on a job and worked, right? At OpenSky, Tom Colicchio and Molly Sims and and Martha Stewart and Cynthia Rowley and all those people who are merchandising on our platform get a share of the net, of the, of the net profit on everything that they sell. And we, that we pay no guarantees to talent, and everybody has the same deal. 
when you say they sell these stuff that they the merchandise buys by their jurisdiction. Right. They are the talent or chief merchandising officer, I don't know what it's called. It, they have hundred percent control of what they sell. So a quick analogy. Martha Stewart said to me, John, I love your business. I said, why? She said, well, I tweet 25 times a day. And when I tweet, three, three million of my Twitter followers read my content. And I make no money. Dick, a good friend of mine, Dick runs Twitter. Twitter sells an ad next to Martha's tweet and keeps 100% of the revenue. And Martha says, my company's worth $300 million, his is worth $8 billion, and I haven't been paid a dime to produce all the content that exists on Twitter. So having, we have 80 celebrities on our platform. I'm leaving here to go to the William Morris Endeavor retreat where 100, 1,000 agents are presenting their sort of conference for the weekend. Celebrities and influencers are frustrated that they, they program in social media but don't get paid. So on OpenSky, what, what Martha and Cynthia and Molly and Padma and a long list of all of our people, what they see is I get 50 I make 50% of the profit on what I sell. Let me drive my audiences from those environments into a dedicated commercial environment and get paid. You know, our top talent today is in four months is making ten thousand dollars a month, and we see that growing you know, pretty much exponentially. Right. So Open Sky is a, it's a good question, right? It's our own environment. We are not uh, built on top of Facebook or built on top of Twitter, or those are certain opportunities that we are in our roadmap. Um, the value a consumer wants to shop where she knows she has her bird in her hand and knows it's a shopping environment. If you ask Bob Sauerberg at Conde Nast said to me, I made, I made, I spent more on lunch today than I made in all of 12 months on my affiliate e-commerce deals I'm doing at Lucky.com. Women are not shopping in traditional content environments, despite what Conde Nast or hers or the other companies want people to believe. It just isn't happening, right? When, like, you might get inspired for what to buy, but you actually buy it in a, in a store. And so Open Sky is a social store. Um, and our talent, the, the, uh, the majority of our audience is actually coming from our talent inviting the audience to come across into this commercial environment.